Hello my beloved vapor sniffers. Our Junkers is painted, taped with decals and varnished. Now it's time to start making it dirty. The whole weathering process is taken by many guys very seriously, like some alchemy. So if you are one of them, you may be very be divided seeing my less serious approach. Please mind you're watching this at your own risk. Shall we start? Before we begin, it's time to think a little bit more about what we want to achieve. Even if we don't have photos of the exact one, based on general knowledge, we might imagine how this machine would have looked like. It will determine our approach. I'll explain it later. Here you see oil paints that I will use to create color shades. Faded green, olive green, basic flesh tone, light sand, faded white and of course thinner. The idea is simple, the darker faded green goes on RLM70 along with brighter colors. Olive green also with bright paints goes on RLM71. The goal is to create a smooth transition between various shades imitating worn effect. It's not rocket science. The paint is applied with no dilution at random dots. Then it's wrapped on the surface connecting various colors. In Poland it's called the ladybird technique because there are some dots on the model like on a ladybird. It's logic, isn't it? Okay, enough with biology. In most cases the paint is blended with enamel thinner. I do not blend it with any liquid using a dry brush instead. Why? I don't know, I'm comfortable with this. I put only bright colors on vertical and horizontal edges, making them visually brighter. Thanks to this, the model looks less uniform. Now, or even earlier, some of you may ask me why I do this. Uh, well, it's a good question. I found this way helpful when I failed a couple of times with post shading. I'm not an airbrush master, so I was looking for some replacement for making the surface uneven. As you may notice here, I cleaned blue patterns on upper surfaces from oil marks with thinner. I decided to leave the upper pattern quite clean because this thing was painted later than the standard dark green green camouflage. There are two biggest advantages of oil paints dry brushing. As first, we can choose various paints to create really diversified shades. Oil paints have very smooth transitions between colors and the way they go through themselves gives the surface extra depth be beautifully visible after a coat of varnish. Second, unlike the post shading with airbrushes, we can always go back if we don't like the effect. If you are an airbrush mother F word care with 20 years of experience in scale modeling, then it's not an argument for you. But I do value the fact I can go backwards and start once again. Because oil paints can be easily removed with enamel thinner, white spirit or turpentine. This particular aircraft could have been heavily weathered. Why? The A4 version started entering service in the second half of 1940. So this aircraft was about three and a half or four years operational. It seems to be a short time of period, but World War II airplanes weren't designed like modern gear which stays over 40 years in service being properly maintained and upgraded. Not many fighters were staying in line for more than half of a year. 
It was caused by several factors. The aircraft had much simple construction. Okay, let's compare a 100 million dollar F-35 to a Spitfire. Secondly, these planes were taking part in a regular combat which meant losses. Thirdly, the development of warfare is extremely fast during wartime. In the half of 1940, an average fighter had an engine with 1200 brake-offs power. In April 1944, the first unit equipped with Me-262s, the first combat jet fighters, was formed. Let's go back to weathering. On the lower surfaces, I decided to apply only brighter colors without adding any blue tones. It was totally enough. The effect was satisfying and surface gained uneven shades. Now it's time for shadows, with smoke and bitume colors. I put some random dots with these colors. They imitate dirt accumulated in corners and less exposed areas. Thanks to it, the model looks more three-dimensional. It's also not a rocket science. I randomly put small dots, then using a dry brush, I rub them on their surface. If I don't like the effect, I can wash paints with an odorless thinner and start once again. Now let's talk about what to use as a thinner. To work with oil paints applied on the model, I use an odorless thinner while to clean brushes I choose artistic balsamic turpentine. And this is the approach I highly recommend. The odorless thinner is not as aggressive as turpentine. I was trying this thing several times before and the effect was quite concerning. The turpentine was reacting with acrylic paints melting them. So this thing is not optional to put on the model, but it's great for cleaning brushes and other stuff like for example trays or cups. Once some angles and hidden areas were darker, I could put more dirt on control surfaces because they also attract dirt. I used the proven mixture of smoke and bitume. The effect was very satisfying. Ok, I don't want to fall into self-adoration mode, but I think fate decided to reward me with all obstacles with fitting issues I had to go through during the assembly of the model.
In the end of oil shading, I covered the model with an X35 semi-gloss clear coat to prepare it for further weathering. To not to make this episode boring and monotonous about brushing oil paints, let's take a look at the canopy which I unmasked. Unfortunately, Edward's mask let some paint to go through, creating ugly stains, to remove which I used the deadly duet composed of corporal warm tap water and sergeant toothpick. These deadly slayers of any unwanted paint stains on clear parts don't get any prisoners. How to use them? Just gently scratch off the paint with a wet toothpick. It's important to use wooden toothpicks, not any plastic ones. Wood is hard enough to remove the paint without scratching very delicate clear parts. Sometimes it's very important to polish clear parts, especially after using masks and removing excess paint. Because I was building my model when some gentlemen decided to jam the Suez Canal with their boat, delaying the supply chain of many products across the world, I had to deal with it myself without polishing compound for scale modelers. The only polishing compound I had in my workshop was the first stage, the coarse one. It's perfect to remove any remains which haven't been removed yet, but it does not help much to get shine. The veterans of scale modeling probably are familiar with using furniture liquids as perfect solutions for clear parts. In the end, I decided to give the canopy the final shine with Tamiya polishing wax. This thing may be used for canopies in some emergency cases, but its main purpose is the shiny and gloss surfaces of car models. And that's all for today's episode. The next one will be a little bit longer because we're going to finish the model and many things will happen, believe me. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon next to the subscription button to be alerted when I upload the next episode. You can also help my channel to grow, which is very important for me and my future projects. How to do this? First, click the thumb up below. You can also click the thumb down button, please share in the comment section below what you don't like so I could improve it. Second, you can share this video on your groups on social media if you think your friends may find something valuable here. Third, you can follow me on Instagram. Thank you for watching, may the good fitting be with you.